Did you know you don't have to lay on your back to give birth? Even though almost no one says, I want to lay on my back to give birth. That's how the majority of women in North America and probably many other places to do it. And why is that? Because even if they're in a more comfortable position, they're usually told, okay, it's time to have your baby. Get on your back now. I've seen many people give birth on hands and knees or squatting, laying on their side, or even standing. Uh, midwives and many doctors know how to catch babies in a variety of positions. It's just a habit for the staff to tell their patients to get on their back to have their baby. So what can you do to avoid this uncomfortable and actually ineffective position? Don't get into the position in the first place. It's hard to get out of it once you're on your back already, especially if you're tired and well into that second stage of labor. Just say no. If you're in a comfortable position and someone says, okay, turn around now, just say no, or just shake your head. You don't even have to talk. And then when you get bugged over and over to keep changing positions, just keep shaking your head and saying no. And I know that sounds totally obvious, but continuing to refuse or even refusing the first time isn't that easy. I made a video about that called the Tendon Befriend Stress Response. I'll put the link down below in case you want to check that out. And it explains why it's so difficult for us to not just do what we're told in labor. Well, I do have a few tips for you. We do the thing that is a habit, the thing we're most used to doing when we're in a stressful or vulnerable position. And that's how many people describe birth. So practice getting on your bed every night on all fours. Just get on your bed on hands and knees and do a few little stretches or something, even if it's just five seconds, and then lay down. And it'll start to feel normal for you to get on your bed without laying down. Um, during labor, crawl up onto the bed and take positions that feel good to you rather than just flopping down on your back. No one will wrestle you onto your back. At least I hope not, because if they do, then that's actually assault. Ensure you have a birth companion who can advocate for you and help you get into the positions that feel best for you. Someone who can help you find your voice. If possible, avoid getting on your back for cervical checks uh, when the birth is imminent, just toward the end there, because it is hard to get out of that position. If you know your baby's moving down well, then maybe there's no need to check. And many medical care providers do know how to check a cervix in a variety of positions. Even if you have an epidural and you're confined to the bed, there are still many positions available to you other than laying on your back. You don't need to ask permission to assume positions of your choice. However, if there's a medical complication that requires certain interventions or positions, then it might be safest for you to be on your back, but those are not common situations. And of course, if it feels good for you to be on your back, then go for it. It's very uncommon, but every once in a while, I see somebody who likes that position. In my dreamy ideal birth world, everyone would be in the position that feels best for them, no matter what that is. So I'm Angie Evans. I'm a prenatal teacher and a doula, and you can find all kinds of information about classes, pregnancy, birth, postpartum on my sites listed below. And I wish you an empowering birth. Um, thanks for watching.